Hello, Mrs. Gray's class. My name is Nick. I'm here from the Foot Collective, and today I want to chat with you a little bit about footwear and the health of your feet. We're going to talk about hips and how to take care of your hips so that they don't become stiff and start to cause problems later in life. And then we're going to chat about the beams that your awesome teacher was kind enough to arrange uh, for all of you to have. So before we get started, next time you see Mrs. Gray, tell her how awesome she is. Because I wish I had a teacher when I was younger that was open-minded to um, getting our class playful tools that help enhance our understanding of our bodies. So thank you, Mrs. Gray. So let's start by talking about feet and footwear. If you're an engineer and you're going to build a building, the first thing you build is a foundation. And the foundation is really important because if it's not built very well, the rest of the building can easily collapse at any time. So the best way to think of your feet is like the foundation of a building. Your feet are the foundation of your body. If you take care of them, they'll take care of you. They'll let you play sports. They'll let you move around without pain. If you don't take care of them, they can cause you problems. And we don't want that. So the biggest thing you gotta know about feet, there's really only two things. Number one, spend as much time barefoot as you can. That seems really simple and probably not something you've heard before uh, from a lot of adults, but it's a secret that maybe most people don't know, but it's a really big important element of foot health. So go barefoot as much as you can. Go barefoot on the lawn, go for a barefoot walk in your neighborhood. You have to be really careful to not step on sharp things but going for a walk when you're barefoot really allows your feet to take in a lot of information from the ground um, and it also allows your body to organize itself how it should, right? When we come out, when we're babies, we don't come out with shoes on because we're not really made to wear shoes. We need to wear shoes because the environment can sometimes harm our feet. So when you do wear shoes, there's four things that you got to keep in mind and the easiest way that I can think of um, or the, the way that I remember these four things is uh, a mnemonic. A mnemonic just means a set of words and each of those words, the first letter, has a, has a certain meaning. So it's an easy way to remember four words. So the four letters are F T F F. Okay? So the best way to remember that is free these fantastic feet. Okay? Free these fantastic feet. So let's go through what those mean. Free, the first one, the F means foot shaped. Okay, our feet are designed to get wider as we get towards the toes. Most shoes get narrower as we get towards the toes, and that can really mess our feet up. So find feet that are shaped, or find shoes rather, that are shaped like feet. And the easiest way to do that is compare your bare foot to a shoe. If they don't look like they're the same shape, you shouldn't put your, shoe, your feet in those shoes, okay? So free these fantastic feet. The first step is foot shaped. T, which is these, is find a shoe with a thin sole. The thinner the sole is, the more information your feet are gonna get from the ground, and your feet are supposed to take in a huge amount of information from the ground, okay? The next F is flexible. When you grab a shoe, you should be able to twist it, bend it, curl it up, because your feet are supposed to move a lot, and if you wear shoes that don't bend and twist and move around and aren't flexible, then your feet aren't gonna be flexible. And inflexible feet become stiff feet, become painful feet, and become feet that aren't really able to organize themselves very well and can cause us problems, okay? The last F is flat. When you look at a shoe from the side, you don't want the heel to be crazy high. Like high heels are obviously a big exaggeration of that, but you want the shoe to be flat. You don't want the heel to be any higher than where the toes are, okay? So free these fantastic feet really means foot shaped, thin sole, flexible shoe, and flat. Those are the four things you need to know. Spend time barefoot and free these fantastic feet and you're gonna have amazing functional feet that are gonna let you do all the things you wanna do without any problems, okay? So that's the footwear side. Let's quickly talk about hips because you know, it might not be relevant for you, but as we get older, our hips start to become stiff because we spend a lot of time in chairs. Okay, when you go to school, you're in chairs. When, you go to, when people go to work, they're in chairs. In cars, they're in chairs. We spend a lot of time in chairs. So the best tip to make sure that your hips keep working like they're supposed to and don't stiffen up, which can cause you problems at your back and at your knees, uh, which even in kids, I'm a physiotherapist by training and I used to see kids all the time that develop knee pain or tight ankles or hip pain because they just spent too much time in chairs. So two things you gotta keep in mind. Number one, Spend as much time on the floor as you can, 
right? Instead of like right now, I'm kneeling on the floor. If you can do that instead of sitting in a chair, you're gonna be much better off. And then number two, this is a really important one. Do some squats every day. I'm not talking about with weights, but just literally go down and do a squat every day. I promise you it'll make a massive difference. It doesn't matter how you do the squat, just do it in any way you want. I'll show you what that looks like. So, standing, okay, from here, I'll go down all the way, doesn't matter what it looks like, hang out for a couple seconds, and then come back up. That's it, too easy. Do a couple squats each day, spend time on the floor, spend less time in chairs. That's it, okay? Now let's talk about the beam. So, the beam that you will all have, that your teacher kindly arranged to, to be uh, sent to your home, I believe you're working from home right now, is a two foot maple beam that we, that we offer at the Foot Collective, okay? So I wanna give you a little primer on the beam. Number one, the only way of doing it wrong is if it's not fun. So if you're smiling and it's fun to do, you're doing it right, it doesn't matter what it looks like. And there's really only two things to keep in mind when you first start on the beam. Don't look down, don't fall off. If you fall off, that's okay. You'll probably fall off a lot initially because your body's not used to it. But the goal is to do, to do more and more challenging movements on the beam uh, as your ability to balance goes up. And maybe another good thing to talk about is what is balance, right? We know most people think that balance means not falling over, but really what happens when you're balancing on one leg, for example, is your brain is doing 100 mi micro adjustments per second to stop you from falling over. And really what that's doing is it's making sure your body has an understanding of where it is in space. So when you're standing on a beam, not only is it good because it makes your foot widen out, which can help counteract the effects of narrow shoes that squish our feet together, it's also helping to make sure your hip is talking to your feet. If those two body parts don't talk together, we run into problems, okay? So I'm gonna give you three initial challenges that you can try on your beam. And if you want more, just let Mrs. Gray know and I'll make another video to show you some more challenges. Okay, so let's go over the first three right now. First of all, when you have your beam, it comes with a piece of wood, which is the beam itself, and then these two little cradles. Make sure that you put the cradles right at the end of the beam. If they're right here and you step on the end, it can tip over, we don't want that. So put both cradles right at the end. Now the first movement that you want to try before any others is single leg. So this is a real easy one. Stand on your beam with one foot. Don't look down, lift your other foot off and see how long you can balance for. At the start, you can time yourself and see how long you get. And then as time goes on, see if you can go longer and longer without falling off. Okay, and see if you can get to two minutes straight on each leg. That's a pretty tough one, but you can do it. At your age, kids are usually great at balancing. Okay, it just takes a little bit of work. And like I said, the more time you've spent in squished shoes or in chairs, the harder this is gonna be. But doing this helps to get you back to a state of not having stiff hips or stiff feet. And it helps loosen them up. And like I said before, it helps your hips talk to your feet. That's really important. So you do one foot, step off, try the same thing on the other leg. You can time the other side as well. Okay, see how different or how similar both sides are. If you do one side, and you get like 10 seconds, you do the other side and you get 30 seconds, that's a big difference. So it tells you that the one that you got 10 seconds on, you gotta work on that one. Okay, so don't look down, don't fall off. Doesn't matter how much wacky flailing you're moving around you do, the more the better actually. Okay, so that's number one. When you get real good, you can see if you can switch from one foot to the other without falling off. So that's another little challenge that you can try. Okay, so that's single leg. The next one I want you to try is called tandem. This is where you're gonna put both feet on the beam, one foot behind the other, okay? So one foot at the back, one foot at the front, and now I always recommend people bend their legs and almost pretend like you're surfing. Now that you can't use the other leg to counterbalance, this is gonna be a lot harder. Okay, so see how long you get there. So you try it in one orientation, and then you can get off, switch your feet, so the foot that was in front now goes behind, put your foot on there, and try it again and time yourself. I have a really basic watch. I can start a stopwatch and see how long I can go, but don't look down, put a smile on your face, and try not to fall off, okay? And the last one I want you to try is called Ninja Stance. And this one is where both of your feet, the beam is under the toe area of both your feet. 
and you're trying to stand on there and balance. So it's a different direction. It feels a little bit different. If you're getting real brave, you can go down and try a squat and you can even see how many squats you can do. Okay, but even just balancing here, it's pretty tricky. And this one's called Ninja. So, those three beam movements will get you started. So try those out, time yourself, see how you do. For your hips, spend time on the floor, out of chairs, and doing some squats every day. I like to do a squat every time I take a pee. It's a really easy way to remember, because during the day you gotta pee. Therefore, you remember to squat. And then the third one is make sure that the shoes you find are foot shaped, have a thin sole, are flexible, and are flat. You do all those things, you're gonna have better feet and hips than most people. And if you become a ninja on that beam and practice it, not only are you gonna be really good at focusing your attention on one thing and be able to calm your mind when you need to, but you're also gonna be a lot more athletic. You're gonna protect yourself against developing knee and low back problems because you're gonna to help to make sure your hips and your feet work well and they speak together. So thanks for watching this. I look forward to hearing any feedback uh, you guys and girls all have. Just let Mrs. Gray know, she'll email me and I can make another video uh, in future if you want more suggestions. Thanks for watching and have an awesome week. Bye.